when I shot our Space Derby Secrets videos last year, um, I had a lot of questions, a lot of comments uh, posted asking about uh, the, the last, the little centerpiece that I was using um, in order to be able to kind of lathe the, the shape of the rocket out. And actually the, um, the one that I used last year actually broke. Um, and what I, when I built it originally, um, I made it just out of a wooden dowel. I took our, our kits down to the hardware store and I found a wooden dowel that was the same size diameter as the, the inside of the kits. And I had actually bought two dowels. I bought one that was uh, the, the inside diameter here, and then I bought one that was the diameter um, going through in the, the nose there. And all I did was just drilled a center hole in the end of one dowel, put the smaller dowel in it, um, and glued it up. And so that, the very first one I built, um, that's all it was. It was very, very basic, very simple. Um, I tapered the side of this to kind of match this taper in here. Um, so it fit nice and tight. And that's what we've used for the last four years. Um, and last year while we were shaping a rocket, um, the narrower, the smaller dowel actually broke on me. Um, just repeated, you know, chucking up in my drill and squeezing and it's wood it's it's not meant to um, to really perform well uh, in the way that I had done it so this year I decided I needed to kind of re-engineer what I was doing so this is our um, space derby shaper 2.0 um, and as you can see we replaced the smaller uh, wooden dowel with a a piece of metal um, and what this is it, it's actually an old spade bed I had um, that had broken uh, like see these kind of right where that hole is I had one that, that snapped that broke off there not quite this large um, I think it was maybe like a, a quarter or a half inch um, I don't don't remember exactly but what I did was I took uh, this same wooden dowel and then um, cut it to to my length, and I'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, and then I used my die grinder, um, and I just started very slowly uh, cutting a notch, cutting a taper into the end of that. And if you look at the side of the spade bits, um, they actually kind of taper as they go out towards the tip. So. Uh, what I did was I took the, the busted off one that I had, um, and these are fairly inexpensive. You, could, you can buy a small one for a buck or two, um, or use an old one and buy a new one to replace it. Um, and so what I did was I, I took that busted off one that I had, and I drew kind of the shape on the side, and then slowly using my, my die grinder, I kind of ate away at that end of the dowel until I had something that was a really, really tight fit in there. Um, when I got that all set up and, and um, looking pretty good, um, I did a couple roll tests because you want to make sure that, um, that you're centered. Um, so as you watch it, if it's not centered, you'll see this kind of wobble as it rolls. Um, kind of the same way you check a, a pool cue to see if it's uh, straight or not. Um, so I got that. I, I put two little tacks just with some um, uh, super glue in there, um, some polyacrylate, and um, when I got it all centered and straight, um, I checked it up in my drill and I spun it a couple times just to make sure I didn't have any wobbles, that this was all nice and straight through here. Um, and when I got it all set and good, um, then I took some two-part epoxy um, and I filled the rest of this gap on both sides with that two-part epoxy and then kind of piled it up around the tip up here too. Um, I used a five minute epoxy, so that's pretty quick because I wanted to get going on my project. Um, you don't, if you don't have epoxy, um, you can use the old uh, super glue and sawdust and, and fill that in there. Um, I've also seen super glue and baking soda. Um, we'll, we'll fill that in. Um, I've even, I, I imagine it might be kind of sticky, 
when you go to shape it, but I imagine you can even use hot glue in there if you wanted to. Um, but that's how I did. Um, and now I've got a, a metal, uh, and it's got a hex drive on it, so when I take my impact here, I can actually chuck this up. Hard to do this one-handed. There we go. Um, so I get it chucked up in there now. Uh, one of the other issues that I had with the, the version one was what to do with this end of it uh, because it kind of wobbled a lot in the drill. Um, and all I did was I, I took a two by four and I just drilled a hole that was slightly larger than the end of my dowel um, so it would hold that end. And that was because I, I really didn't have any rigidity in this. Um, and so with this one, I don't really even need anything on that other end. Um, it holds it nice and tight. And you can see, if you watch out here, you'll see this wobble a little bit. That's just the fit in my drill. Um, there's enough wiggle in it. So if I hold that end while I'm going, and I can't do it with one hand, um, if I hold that, it, it's actually really nice and smooth. Um, so after I got that all glued up and made sure everything was centered, um, then the last thing you want to do is some fit tests to make sure that your taper kind of matches the shape of the rocket kits. Um, lengthwise, you can see I wanted enough hanging out the back that I could easily hold on to that or I could rest it on something. It doesn't need to be terribly long. Um, but I've probably got about oh, three or four inches hanging out the back end of the rocket there. Um, so this is our 2.0 jig. I wanted to talk real quick about finishing um, on this piece. So uh, a couple things. Um, when I bought my dowel, I bought one that was slightly larger than the inside of my rocket. And the first time I took my halves and I put them together, I could see on the side kind of a gap there um, and I knew that this was too big and so I got some kind of medium grit uh, sandpaper and I just slowly worked that down until I got a nice tight fit on the two halves of my rocket. Um, now we don't glue these on it's just a friction fit so you don't want to go too far and make this too small um, and you don't want it to be too big or you'll actually have a gap in your, in your halves. Um, so it, it's better just to kind of sneak up on it, do a little bit at a time. Uh, when I finish this, uh, the first thing I do is put just a real light coat of um, lacquer on it. Um, and I'll take uh, just a paper towel and spin it and kind of rub up and down just to even out that first uh, thin coat of lacquer. And then after that, I use a little uh, paste wax, a little furniture wax on it. Um, and this has two things. One, it's a nice way to, uh, to finish out that wood, protect it. And also, as we go to glue up our, our rocket halves, uh, one of the things, and I've talked about it in my previous videos, are that the sides aren't always equal. So like in this case, this is a little bit thicker and this is a little bit thinner. So if you don't want an offset center hole, you know, if you just glue it up where the outsides are even, your inside is not. So we've always glued ours up on the last um, to make sure that the center is perfectly round and all, you know, centered up around that last. Um, so by putting the, the little coat of paste wax on here, that also means that any glue that seeps out isn't going to stick to my last and it, I'm going to be able to get this out um, after we're done shaping it. So um, when I shot the previous video, I realized I forgot to talk about a couple of those things, um, but they're, they're really important when you're making these. So sneak up on the, the diameter of this slowly and then when you're done, finish it out just a little paste wax. And then I wanted to run this, um, I know the previous video was kind of shaky, so I wanted to show you that it is actually and how I made it. Um, if you want to do one, like I said, it's, it's probably a, 
five or six dollar investment to build one of these the first time uh, less if you happen to have the the dowels and an old uh, uh, doled out spade bit um, and we'll use this every year my youngest is supposed to be born any day and so we're going to be doing Cub Scouts for at least the next 10 or 11 years um, so pretty small investment and the, the number of rockets that we're going to build with four kids uh, for sure we'll uh, we'll get it back so that's it that's how I built my jig uh, 2.0 replacement um, if you want to build one yourself uh, I'd love to hear how it goes for you so leave me some comments or replies Thanks.